This is Mr. Navi from Roger Bacon High School. Today's lesson on 10-4 is for solving radical equations. The goal for today's uh, activity is to find the solution to an equation that has a variable and a radical expression. Before we start solving problems of this type, I think it's good to talk about some basic problems that you already know how to solve. So a couple review questions. 3x plus 4 equals 10. If I want to solve for x, what I want to do is get x all alone. And the way we do that is by working backwards. Instead of adding 4, we will subtract 4 from both sides to get a sum of 0 here. So now we have 3x equals 6. And instead of add, uh, multiplying by 3, we will divide by 3, do the opposite, and get a solution of x equals 2. Now you can always take this answer, plug it back in to see that 3 times 2 plus 4 is in fact 10. In the second example, x plus 3 divided by 4 equals 4. We want to isolate x. That means get x all alone. So we'll work backwards. Instead of dividing by 4, to undo that, or to make it equal 1, I'll multiply by 4. Because 4 divided by 4 is 1. So now I have x plus 3 equals 16. Instead of adding 3, what I want to do is subtract 3 to get 0. And that gives us x equals 13. Again, you can always take that solution, plug it back into the original problem. And 13 plus 3 is 16 divided by 4 is 4. So the key to solving equations that have a variable in the radical is to isolate the radical. Isolate the radical. It's just like getting the variable all alone. We want to get the radical all alone. So we'll look at five examples and then I'll have you practice a few. Example number one. The square root of 10h plus 1 is equal to 21. In order to get the radical all alone, and let me highlight the radical term, in order to get that term all alone, I want to get rid of the 1. So I will subtract 1 on both sides, and that equals 0. So now I have the square root of 10h is equal to 21 minus 1, which is 20. I want to undo the square root symbol. So what I want to do is the opposite of the square root, and that operation is squaring. Those undo each other, much like adding and subtracting undo each other, multiplying and dividing undo each other. Square root and squaring will undo each other, which leaves 10h, and 20 squared is 400. Finally, if we divide by 10, we get h is 40. Again, I can always take that solution, plug it back in for h to see if it works. So we would have the square root of 10 times 40, which is the square root of 400, that's 20, plus 1 would give us 21. In example 3, I want to isolate the radical. That's the term I want to get all alone. So in order to do that, I will subtract 3 from both sides, which gives me the square root of 7r plus 2 is equal to 4. Now I want to get rid of the square root. Since the radical is all alone, I can get rid of it next. And the opposite of square root is squared. And those operations cancel or undo each other. And 4 squared is 16. Now we simply solve like a regular problem. Subtract 2 gives us 7r equals 14. Divide by 7, you get r is 2. Again, you could always take the 2, plug it back in for r to check your answer. So let's do that. I would do the square root of 7 times 2 plus 2. Well, 7 times 2 is 14, plus 2 is 16, and the square root of 16 is 4. If I add 3 to that, I get 7, so it works. Example 3, I want to isolate the radical. Again, I'll highlight that term, because that's the term I want to get all by itself. So I've got to get rid of the 5. Well, what gets rid of a 5 is subtracting 5. That makes 0. I have the square root of g minus 3 is equal to 1. I'll then square both sides because now that the radical is all alone, the opposite of that is squaring. And then we'll add 3 to both sides to get g by itself, 
and G turns out to be 4. Again, you can plug it back in for G in the equation to sim see that it is, in fact, true. Example 4, I want to get the radical all alone. First step, we will subtract 8 from both sides. That gives me 0, so what I have left is negative square root of x plus 2 equals negative 6. Now, there's a negative 1 here. If there's a negative coefficient, that means it's negative 1. So the next thing I need to do to get the radical all alone is to divide by negative 1 because those will cancel. And I'm left with the square root of x plus 2 is equal to positive 6. Now, if I square both sides, I get x plus 2 is equal to 36. Subtract 2, x is equal to 34. Last question. In this final example, the square root of k plus 2 equals 3 radical 2. The radical is already all alone. So at this point, I'm ready to square both sides. And those cancel, giving me k plus 2. But on this side, and I'm just going to write this off to the side so you understand what we're doing. If you square a term, you're multiplying it by itself. And if I multiply by itself, then the 3's can be multiplied. The coefficients give you 9. And the radicals can be multiplied. The 2 and the 2 give you radical 4. And 9 times the square root of 4 is 9 times 2, which is 18. Now we subtract 2 to get k all alone. k is 16. So that's the process for solving a radical equation. At this point, I'd like you to practice questions 9 through 14 from page 644. Please bring those to class. That will be part of your note check. Thank you.